Welcome to a brand new series called vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. Simply put, watch time is the total number of minutes viewers watch your YouTube videos for. You can look at your watch time from the YouTube analytics page for either your entire channel or for individual videos. The vidIQ real time stats bar also shows you watch time for the last seven days. While there are many factors that decide the success of a YouTube video, watch time is definitely one of the most important for one simple reason. The more minutes a viewer stays on YouTube, the more ads they can sell. As a video creator, it's your job to keep viewers on YouTube through watch time, so make sure to keep viewers engaged throughout your videos with the best content you can possibly produce. The more watch time your videos get, the more YouTube will promote them. Everybody wins! Check your audience retention analytics on a regular basis to see how long your viewers are watching your content for, because if you can keep them on YouTube to watch more videos, even if they're not your own videos, you will benefit from something called session watch time, which we will cover in a future video. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. As explained in a previous vidIQ Short, watch time is the total number of minutes your videos are watched for but session watch time takes this concept one step further. Let's say a viewer enters YouTube through one of your videos. They watch it, enjoy it and decide to watch another one of your videos. Great! But after watching that video, they then see a related video from another channel and go and watch that too. That's bad news for you, right? Well, not so. Because your video brought the viewer into YouTube, even though they are now watching someone else's content, you still take some of the credit because it's all part of the same viewing session, hence the term session watch time. Many argue that a viewer's session watch time is even more important than the watch time on your videos. The problem is, it's difficult to accurately measure because there are no specific analytics for this. So in summary, make sure your viewers stay switched on and tuned in to YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. The YouTube Traffic Sources Analytics page is a powerful tool that shows you where every single video view comes from. There are, of course, many potential sources, but the one that usually tops the list is suggested videos. If you click on this link, it will list all the videos that push video traffic your way, and if you watch any particular video in this list, you should be able to see your video in their suggested video column. While YouTube's Traffic Sources page can show you traffic for your whole channel, vidIQ's video scorecard can show you traffic for a single video. If you go to the watch page for any of your videos, you can mouse over the YT search box on the video scorecard to see traffic not only from different search terms, but also which videos suggested the viewer to watch the video page you are currently on. Suggested views means your video's SEO is well optimised and it has good watch time because YouTube knows it's safe to send traffic to the page without losing the viewer from YouTube. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. With vidIQ's Chrome extension installed, the video scorecard gives you a ton of information, one of those being video tags. But what do these numbers mean? Well, this is where the video ranks on YouTube search. So if Galaxy S8 Tips ranks this video second, when you search for that term, this video will appear second in the list. You can check your traffic sources to discover how many people find your videos through searches, so optimising your tags is very important. It will come as no surprise to you that vidIQ evaluates your tags through the SEO scorecard. The higher the actionable score, the more discoverable your video is on YouTube. The higher the performance score, the more views, watch time and engagement your video will have. For more information on our SEO scorecard, check out the video link on screen now and do bear in mind that ranked tags are influenced by your YouTube account viewing preferences. So for a clean result, log out of your account and see how it affects the ranked tags. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. If you use the vidIQ Chrome extension on a regular basis, you will be familiar with our legendary video scorecard. However, you may be puzzled by one of the analytics that usually gives you a number in the hundreds and is called words per minute. Well, this figure literally is the number of words spoken every minute during a YouTube video you are watching. How it's calculated is a bit of a secret, but why is this important at all? Well, our own data sets show that, on average, videos with higher words per minute tend to perform better. 
In other words, the faster you talk and the more jump cuts you have, the more engagement and views you will get. And when you consider a whole slosh of YouTubers who talk really fast with tons of jump cuts and boundless energy, you can start to see the logic in this theory. You ain't got time to get bored. Now of course, this isn't an exact science and it may not suit your style of delivery. But the next time you watch a video, have a peek at the words per minute and how successful a video is and you might start to see a pattern. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. As you should already know if you watch our 60 second series on a regular basis, you can increase the playback speed of videos to double speed. But this raises an interesting question, does playback speed affect watch time? Or to put it another way, does watching a 10 minute video at double speed give you 10 minutes or 5 minutes of watch time? In a recent video by YouTube guru Daryl Eves, he says that you would get 5 minutes. So let's put this answer to a very simple test. This is a brand new 18 minute video set to private with no views. So what I'm going to do is watch the whole thing through at double speed and then check back on the analytics in a couple of days. Fortunately you don't have to wait that long so here are the results. There's our single view on an 18 minute video played at double speed which results in 9 minutes of physical watch time. Furthermore the audience retention comes in at exactly 50%. So bear this analytical curveball in mind and let us know what you think of how YouTube records this data. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. On the 16th of January 2018, YouTube announced a change in channel requirements for monetizing content. Previously, your channel simply needed 10,000 views, but now the rules have become a lot stricter. In a nutshell, your channel will need 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time over a 12 month period to be eligible. That works out at 240,000 minutes a year, 20,000 minutes a month. To check this on your channel, go to your YouTube analytics and change the date range to the last 365 days. Those channels previously eligible for monetization have a grace period up until the 20th of February 2018 to reach these milestones before their content will be demonetized. Any money earned up to that point will be paid out through the standard AdSense policy. YouTube state that 99% of channels affected make less than $100 a year, with 90% of those channels earning less than $2.50 in the last month. Have you been affected? Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. There's a long-held YouTube rumor that goes along the lines of this. If my content isn't monetized, then YouTube won't promote it as highly in search results and suggested videos. The reasonable argument being that there would be no reason to push content that doesn't earn YouTube any money. And with the recent changes to the YouTube Partner Program, this topic of conversation has surfaced once again. The question is, is it true? The answer, in YouTube's own words, is monetization status is not used to inform how videos display on YouTube. If your channel is no longer in the YouTube Partner Program after February 2018, it does not mean your videos will be limited in search and discovery. Now, whether you choose to believe this is of course entirely up to you. But consider this, if it is true, every single video creator who has ever lived went through the same suffering before they were able to monetize their content. It's up to you to decide whether you think YouTube is with you or against you. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. If you're about to lose monetization because you don't meet the new requirements of the partner program, does that mean you'll lose any other YouTube features or tools? Let's find out. All video creators can use video cards, however you will no longer be able to link to external websites from the 20th of February. YouTube state they are bringing in new eligibility criteria for this soon. The Creator Studio where you can review audience analytics and manage your channel isn't affected. You don't need to be on the partner program to claim a custom URL, instead you need to meet these requirements. Custom thumbnails are not part of YPP either, instead you need to verify your YouTube Google account by phone, this has not changed. End screens are exactly the same as video cards, everyone can use them but only those on YPP can link to external websites. To live stream, you need to verify your account and have no live stream restrictions over the last 90 days and scheduling videos doesn't require YPP either. For more information on any of this, check out the link in the video description. Welcome back to another episode of vidIQ Shorts. 60 seconds, one topic, let's go. 
YouTube has its own comment manager page where you can respond to everything all at once. You can like comments, even love them. But what about pinning a comment on a particular video? Unfortunately, to do that, you would have to click on the specific video, click on the options next to the comment you want to pin, then click pin, and to be honest, that sounds like far too much wasted time and energy to me. Of course, what would be fantastic is an option that allows you to pin comments from the comment manager page without having to leave it. And of course, vidIQ has the answer. With this new pin button, you can now pin any comment on the comment manager page to its corresponding video. A pop-up will warn you that it will overwrite the existing pinned comment and once the action is complete, the pin will change colour to clearly indicate your new pinned comment. Pinned comments can be unpinned by clicking on the pin again and I haven't even told you the best news yet. This brand new vidIQ tool is absolutely free.